Gaming conventions are some of the funnest things to go to if you're into video games. A group of nerdy people who just love playing video games all in one convention hall is just an enjoyable thing to think about. And there are lots of things to do at gaming conventions as well. You can play games at the stalls for different publishers, take part in tournaments, meet game developers, meet content creators, meet other people interested in the same games as you are, and you could even try to ask a cosplayer out if you're feeling brave enough. One of the biggest brands when it comes to video game conventions is obviously PAX. It's one of the biggest gaming conventions out there with lots of people attending each installment of the brand's conventions. PAX is also a popular convention for gaming content creators, such as Let's Players. I have always wanted to go to a PAX convention since they always seem like so much fun. Now, anyone who keeps up with PAX obviously knows about their Prime conventions, known as PAX Prime. There were a series of PAX conventions that were known by most convention goers as the most fun gaming conventions out there. The reason it's called PAX Prime is because PAX wanted the people at the Prime conventions to feel in their prime, on top of the world, having the time of their life, and being a part of so many fun activities you could just stumble upon by simply walking around the convention. However, Sadly, there hasn't been a PAX Prime since 2015. There were PAX Primes from 2010 up to 2015, however there hasn't been one since, which is strange. The people who work at PAX definitely want the people going to their conventions to have the time of their life. That's why every PAX Prime was called Prime. I am and always will be, a firm believer that after the current hardships of the world are over, there should be another PAX Prime. The previous PAX Primes were obviously the best conventions PAX has ever created, and it would be a shame to just never have one again. The people of the world are going through a hard time right now. By anyone's standards, hard times such as this should have a reward at the end of the tunnel. It would be silly for there not to be one. Hence, I believe at some point in the future, there should be another PAX Prime. Now, you might be thinking, since the last PAX Prime was 5, going on 6 years ago, it would be silly to take the same concept of a convention and remake it, you know, a definitive edition, if you will, without any changes. And I agree with that. That is why I am going to propose 5 events that I think would make a modern day PAX Prime the most enjoyable one yet. I will present these five events as if I'm presenting them to PAX themselves. If you enjoy video game analysis content like this, be sure to subscribe. Number one, YouTuber Smash Tournament. I'm sure most of the YouTube community would love to see their favorite content creators duke it out in the most beloved fighting game franchise of all time, Super Smash Bros. PAX Prime 2015 had tournaments for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. Melee. However, given that we're trying to modernize PAX Prime for the 2020s, the best thing to do would be having a YouTuber Smash tourney for the current game of the franchise, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Some of the YouTubers that could duke it out and take part in it are Ryukar, Frost Prime, Nikachu, Popped One, Leon Lush, iNabber, Jay Schlatt, Desbug, Mr. A Game, and so many more. An epic crossover no one would have expected, all happening on the most fun gaming convention of all time, PAX Prime. Number 2. Crank Gameplays and Junko Inoshima doing the tango. One of the things I like about conventions like PAX and VidCon is that people get to see their favorite YouTubers doing stupid shit in person. Crank Gameplays is one of the kings of doing stupid shit on YouTube. Not only that, but he has gone to many PAX conventions. Since he is one of the kings of nonsensical behavior, him doing the tango with Junko Inoshima isn't that far-fetched of a suggestion. If you don't know who Junko Inoshima is, she's the main villain of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc and the mastermind behind Hope's Peak. A Junko cosplayer doing the tango with Ethan would be peak PAX Prime. 
At the same time, there is the problem with Ethan having a girlfriend. However, there are two ways we could approach this barrier. First, his girlfriend could be the one cosplaying Junko and do the tango with him, and if that doesn't work, we can just think of the tango as something that doesn't necessarily have to be restricted to couples, and it would be more goofy than romantic or passionate anyways, you know, it would be more goofy on the goofy side, so I don't think it would be cheating even if Ethan's girlfriend yells at him afterwards. Number 3. Alpharad getting chased by a horde of Pyra cosplayers. Now, in a recent Mario Maker 2 video, Alpharad said this. Have you ever seen someone faster than me? Like in real life, like I can run really fast. All my friends know I can. They know me, that's what they call me. They call me fast. Whoa! Usain Bolt's faster? <laughs> yeah, right. Has, have, have we ever raced before? I am speed. This is honestly a very interesting fact about Alpharad, and I would love to see this talent of his at work. My thinking is, he goes to the bathroom, and once he comes out, there's a group of Pyra cosplayers that greet him, scream at the top of their lungs, and start chasing him down the convention hall. This would definitely be extremely funny, and it would surely make his fans laugh, so I should say, I say he should go along with it. Alpharad is a known and open fan of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, similar to Jacksepticeye, which I made two videos on him being a Xenoblade fan if you want to watch those. So in all honesty, he would probably want to be chased by a bunch of pirate cosplayers. It's probably his wet dream. If they catch up to him, then a bunch of pirate cosplayers tackle him, which is obviously awesome, but if he runs them out, it was still a funny haha -ha Twitter moment that he could also put on YouTube and even do a commentary video about. Number 4. Sai Nijima Crossplay Competition Sai Nijima is one of the sexiest female villains in any video game I've ever played. The combination of her sexy outfit and seductive attitude add to this greatly. It honestly begs the question, what if a bunch of grown men were at a convention cosplaying her for a competition and prize money? Hear me out, right? This is a good idea. A Sai Nijima cosplay competition with only men. Men only cosplaying Sai Nijima. A bunch of grown ass men cosplaying Sai Nijima. I don't want to sound like Shadow Kanji, but doesn't that just sound awesome? <laughs> it would definitely be one of the funniest cosplay conventions of all time, given how embarrassing it would be for a grown man to wear her outfit. Point blank, I just want to see a bunch of hairy grown men cosplaying Sai Nijima. Finally, Last, but not least, my favorite of the five, live action roleplay Splatoon game. I thought I would end this list with the one that sounds like the most fun. Splatoon is one of the most famous party game franchises in history, to the point where there have been instances where people have gone out and made their very own live action Splatoon game. The most famous one being one that happened on the West Coast around the time that Splatoon on the Wii U originally launched, and it was even held by Nintendo, and it was honestly a really amazing thing to see happen. Just imagine a bunch of people armed with splatter shots squirting ink all over the place and all over each other. It would honestly be so much fun. It could go kind of like a tournament where there's eight different teams, eight different colors, and they all play a fun game of Turf War to see which ink color can fill up the most space. It has been a dream of mine ever since Splatoon came out to be in a live action Splatoon game. And doing one at a convention honestly sounds like a lot of fun. I'd be down for it and I'm sure a lot of other people would be too. If anyone's thinking about doing an IRL Splatoon game, hit me up on YouTube, hit me up on Discord, hit me up on Instagram, and I'll sh be sure to join you in it. 
If anyone who works at PAX is watching this video, feel free to implement any of the ideas I presented in this video into your next PAX convention, even if it's not a PAX Prime convention. At the end of the day, another PAX Prime is something that needs to happen, and I honestly hope you can all agree with me on that. Like I said earlier in the video, hard times need to have a reward at the end of the tunnel, and it would be really nonsensical for there not to be one. I believe that since PAX Prime has gone down in history as peak gaming conventions, it would be the perfect reward to the gaming community for making it out alive. Stay safe everyone. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. I also have an Instagram account, link to that will be in the description. As always, stay chill everyone.